Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Archihacks tutorial. So today we're going to take a look at creating this beautiful diagram using Illustrator and Rhino. Without further ado, let's get started. So first off, right off the bat, I'm just going to go ahead and create some massing for this building. So I'm just going to create some really basic Rhino geometries here, manipulating some nerves and creating boxes and Boolean differencing and unioning them. I've also brought in some um, shapes that I've used for other projects. You should feel free to explore with your own project as well. Um, I'm not getting too into detail about manipulating basic geometries in Rhino, but let me know in the comments if you would like to see that in our future videos. And yes, just in case you're wondering, that is a ferris wheel in the building. It sounds a little crazy, but if it's a conceptual or academic project, I strongly encourage you to try different things out. Which isn't to say don't listen to your professors, but it's more like develop your own languages and style during this time. And of course, you can synthesize people's advices and try to come up with something more reasonable and also applicable in the real world. So on the screen, you can still see I'm playing around with geometry. It's never like a straightforward answer in design. There's always a bit of a room to change and shimmy things around. Sometimes the geometry seemed really good, but next moment it's not so good. Um, so yeah, in this step, I'm just decided to make the building step back a little bit and just keeping things a little bit simple just for the demonstration purpose. And um, next thing I want to do after I finish designing the building was to populate the surrounding. And to do that, I'm going to use our latest product called 3D Urban Pack. Um, the pack includes all kinds of objects starting from, you know, little street furnitures all the way to other vehicles, all kinds that you can kind of customize. And of course, they're built in Rhino, so that means you can fully customize them, render them, and they will look amazing in every direction. So I strongly recommend you check it out. Um, and the best part is that they come in little setups like this. So you can really quickly populate your scene um, using these templates. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna take these and use them in our project. So let me go to the plan view and start grouping them. Let's actually block it. Okay, and I'm gonna copy them over to our main project. All right, cool. Let's see what we can do now. So now I can just simply take a whole block at a time and then start placing them in our model. So let me put on project and place them where they have been placed before. Okay, that seems like a good place. Take this guy, move it right here. And, um, you can take as much or little time as you want when you're arranging this. Um, I've actually done this in advance, so I'll just copy over the files. Okay, so now that our scene is ready, I think we can simply make 2D the whole thing. Uh, I'm first going to change our perspective to parallel and select everything in our scene. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit so we can capture more of the context. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's go with make 2D and say OK. This is going to take a little while, so I'll come back when the export is ready. Okay, so it has been finished, so I'll go ahead and check out the results. So the result is in plan view, just like that. Yeah, looks great. Um, everything's organized nicely into layers, and I think we are pretty ready to take this to Illustrator. I'll select everything and type in export and choose a destination of your choice. All right, once the export process is complete, you can open up the file in Illustrator, just like so. And um, okay, let me first make sure my paper size is set up correctly. I'll go over to Artboard and then, okay. I, I like the 1920 by 1080 setup. I'll just turn it into a landscape orientation and then select everything to scale it down. Let's see, I'll transform, scale, and let's make it, let's start with 30%. 
How does that sound? Actually, 50% might be a good start. Okay, definitely a good start. Now, I'm quite enjoying this level of zoom. So I'm just going to go ahead, remove this rectangle and start decorating this up. Um, so since all the objects are layered properly, we should be able to play with the line weights in a macro scale. So for example, I'm guessing this whole layer is car and we can just try turning them on and off. So these, this whole layer is the street lamp. So I think my immediate intuition is that the cars are a little too dark. So I'll go ahead, select all the lines from this layer and reduce the line weights to about 25%. Okay, that looks nice and light. All right, well, in fact, I'm actually gonna select all the layers and turn them into 25 or 0 0.25 for starters. And we'll start picking out the important parts and then turning them into a different weight. So for example, I'll click on this line that represents our building. And since this is a slightly more important part of the design, I'm gonna go ahead, take these guys to let's say 0.75 for stroke. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, the context looks a little bit too light. Is that too light? Probably. Um, so maybe these guys can be one full weight. And uh, aside from those two, everything else can be half. So it's it's always a bit of an iterative process. Um, it's hard to land on the right thing from the start. So feel free to adjust them and kind of like go through the trial and error process. Sometimes it is necessary for the, um, yeah, sometimes it's a part of the design process. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Um, so one thing fun I wanted to do in this project is that I wanted to use two different colors. So for example, I want the context to be blue and our building to be red, for example. In that case, um, I'll go ahead, select all the context layers and change the line color to the blue that we want. We want to go for some sort of a cyan look, so I'll start with that. Did that work? All right, that's already looking pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm liking that. And then I'll invert that selection, go ahead, select our Ferris wheel, all the objects, and then choose a color that is close to magenta. I think magenta is what I'm feeling. Let's see, is that magenta enough? Beautiful, wow, you know, I, I love this color combination. This is an interesting one to play with for sure. Um, the line weights on the building itself seems a little bit light. So I'm gonna go ahead, select all that and try just dabbing it up just a little bit on the um, little arrows. And um, we should probably give it a line around them just to outline them. So I'll go ahead, create that as well in a second layer. So I'm gonna go ahead, lock everything else. Um, okay, yep, and I'll take a pen tool, shortcut is P, and then I'll just draw the line around it. Um, maybe before, before I get started, I'm gonna increase the weight to let's say like five. It might be a little too thick, but I guess we'll see. And um, this is probably something I could have done in Rhino before I came in here. But um, yeah, I guess this is one way of improvising. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Honestly, I'm really liking that. Um, one thing I might want to do is to turn our context building just a little thicker as well. So let's go ahead and find that. Okay, this is it. Now select all the lines in that layer and turn it up to, let's say like two. Maybe that's a little too thick. Um, yeah, definitely too thick. Let's reduce that to one, should be good. And I'll just go ahead and remove some interstitial lines that we didn't remove in Rhino. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and add some finishing touches and see you guys on the other side. And there we have it. We have our multi-colored diagram created using Rhino and Illustrator. So if you guys found this tutorial helpful in any way, please make sure to like this video and subscribing to our channel will allow you to see our latest life hacks as soon as they're released. 
And if you happen to upload your work to your social media, make sure to tag us for a chance to be featured on our account. With that being said, thanks for tuning in again, and I'll see you next time.